What's up boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Night Call. We're just about to wrap up Night 4 as we head into Night 5. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You lie down on the open sofa bed. The events of the day run through your head, treat the passengers. Yeah, we know this already. Every end of the night, it's kind of the same thing. Almost. It kind of cycles between a few uh, scripts, but essentially the same. Right, open my eyes. For secondary, you hope the evidence board was just a dream too, but you can make it out in the shadows. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Alright, here we go. Let the night begin. Cool, the uh, gas tank is full. We spent a lot of money <laughs> on... Uh, on the uh, previous night, I think. I think it was the previous night? Or the night before that. Uh, today we're gonna start off with... Just to see what kind of fares we have here. Uh, we only have one observation point we haven't been to, so we're gonna start off with that. And then we'll listen to the radio uh, and take a few fares, because we're running low on many. We have to keep an eye out. This is Apparently it's very difficult, to, uh, very easy to spend money. You leave your taxi behind and walk towards the last victim's building. Charles Beaugrand Ferre was killed in his parking garage. The large metal garage door is firmly closed. Uh, uh, shall we investigate the crime scene? Uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, intruding, but... Uh, look for another entrance. You walk around to the back of the building and look at the various entrances. The main one, the garage door, and the maintenance door for the trash cans. Try the main entrance? You've barely taken the step when a voice calls out to you. Hey! What are you doing? This is private property. Oh shit. You turn around and see a rather elderly man, probably the concierge. He shines his flashlight in your direction. Uh... I'm lost. Shall we make an excuse? Let's make an excuse. Lost? You think I'm a fucking idiot? Go! Get out of here or I'm calling the cops. You leave the lobby. The concierge follows you and checks to make sure the door is firmly shut behind you. If I see you lurking around again, I'm calling the cops. You make your way back to the cab. You glance back at the building. The furious concierge is gone. You settle in behind the wheel, short of breath. Oh, I fucking... I fucked that one up. Shit. Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, we might have missed something important here. Damn it, can I we visit it again? No, we cannot. Okay, let me listen to the radio. The news more specifically. In between two boring stories, you hear that DJ, a star of the French music scene back in the 90s, was found dead in his home. They gave no other details, but you wonder for a second if they're not talking about your passenger. As soon as the news is over, you turn the radio off so that the cab is silent again. Shit, that, that might have been uh, our DJ, the our passenger. What was his name? DJ... Sonic Boom? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, so let's see, let's pick up... Uh, let's pick up a passenger. Oh man, I gotta put this case together. It's not looking good. It's not looking good, I'm telling you. <laughs> I have, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> There's only four suspects and... Uh... Oh, this passenger said needed to talk to me. Sorry, I didn't quite read that. The passenger who gets in the cab greets you in an uncertain tone. Good evening. Try to answer as warmly as possible. Good evening. Good evening. I want to... He stops short, trembling, as if in a panic. Uh, is everything alright? No, it's not. I... I... He begins pouring her heart out. A flood of sorrow fills the cab. I've lost my cat. She shakes her head as if chasing a bad dream. I know, I know, it's pretty silly and it's pathetic, but I lost my cat. He holds up a poster of the missing animal. His name is Krauki. Oh, we actually... Uh, <laughs> it's actually been one of our passengers. That's the cat. We know where we took him, maybe we can help. The cat from the other night, you sure of it? 
Listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, but someone saw my cat get into get into a cab. So I called your company and asked which taxis were in the neighborhood the night he disappeared. You were the only one. I need your help. Her tone is increasingly hesitant, secure. Please tell me. Know where he is? Where is Crokey? Or Crokey? Let's just say Crokey. Where is my cat? He takes a deep breath. The question of life and death. Yeah, I saw him, yeah. He sits up and straight as a, with a jerk. That's that's wonderful. Where is he? Take me there. Uh did he took the train? I'm not gonna lie, so I guess he took the train. The train? She looks down at the poster in her hands. That's why he stole my money. I knew he was up to something. He's so smart, for a little ball of fluff. Did you talk to him? You remain quiet. I'm sure you talked to him. Crokey is not just any old cat, you know. He saved my life. I adopted him when he was a, still a tiny kitten. I took care of him, spoiled him, fed him for weeks. I took, the, I took time off work to take care of the little thing. I knew right away he wasn't like other cats. He was different. I stood up for him too. When my friends said he was taking up too much room in my life, I dropped them. When they told me he couldn't come with me to work anymore, I changed companies. He's the only reason I get out of bed in the morning. Please, I'm begging you. When my mother died, I decided to get cats. I thought you would take my mind off things, get me interested in something else, and then... She stares at you. I'm going to ask you one last time. Do you know where my cat is? Tell the truth, of course, man. Why would I lie to her? What the hell? Your cat got into my cab. Her eyes flash with hope. I drove him to Saint Lazare. Deauville? Maybe. He's in Do Deauville? I'm sure of it. He loves it there. Could you could you stop the car please? Uh, it's it's stopped already, we're not even driving, but okay. You pull over to the sidewalk. Thank you. He lowers her gaze. I know I was a little too much for him. I might have been a little suffocating, but he was everything to me. And nobody, nobody seems to understand. Nobody. Uh, I'm not gonna say any of these, man. She's clearly very invested in the cat, and it's very important to her. And the, the cat was special, I give you that, because he took a cab and took a train. That cat was very special. What the f- I'm not gonna say nothing. Time seems to have come to a standstill. By and by, he looks over at you. He's probably dead by now. And it's your fault. She gets out of the cab and walks away without shutting the door. The next minute she's gone, swallowed up by the night. You get out of the you get out and close the door. You take a deep breath, your lungs freeze. You wait another minute, then get back inside and start the engine. Alright, we Oh, she gave us a tip as well, even though she thinks we killed her cats because we drove her to the train station. Let's continue on. Hopefully that cat will come back. Take the train again, hopefully hop in my taxi, and we'll, we can lead him or her. I'm not sure if it was a straight uh, male cat or a female cat, but maybe we can lead the cat back to its owner. I'm not sure. Right, let's pick up another passenger. This time this very suspicious looking man here. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing a toupee, but I'm not sure. Could be. Could be. Airport. Shinji Kuramada. Alright. Go to the airport. 20 euros. Nice and easy. Next passenger is waiting to on the sidewalk with an enormous suitcase next to him. Get out of the cab and pick up the suitcase, which must weigh 45 kilos at the very best. Put it in the trunk. You get back in with your passenger close on your heels. The doors slam shut. Turn the key in the ignition and look up at your passenger. Charles de Gaulle, right? He nods and you start driving. Still pretty early to be getting on the plane. He must be the type that likes to get there well ahead of time. Japanese? Chinese? You're not sure. You smile. Tourists always have such a magical image of Paris. There's almost no traffic and you're able to drive at a decent speed. Behind you, in the rear mirror, you can see the tip of the Eiffel Tower start to appear. Uh, 
He, do he doesn't look very cheerful, but... I mean, his uh, hands are crossed as well, or his arms are crossed. Uh, it's very indicative of a defensive stance. Oh, uh, but let's try and break the ice. Eiffel Tower! <laughs> he smirks. Uh, yeah, I can't read that. <laughs> his tone leads you to believe he thinks it's ugly. Uh, say something in English? Oh, because we were speaking French or something? Probably. Uh... A few words you know in English get you nowhere with your passenger. And he continues to speak in Japanese. His voice is frank, with a dose of exhaustion. I have no idea what he's saying to me. If anyone uh, cares to translate this, I'll be greatly appreciated. Oh, okay, it's Japanese. You're sure now. Alright. He imitates the sound of a plane taking off. Is this the sound of the plane? You think you may have recognized the name of the airport. Uh, airport? Airport! He nods. Okay. He turns away so vehemently. Vehemently? You understand he wants to be left in peace, he wants calm and silence. You hear him mumbling to himself. His voice is deep and heavy. A lot of mumbling he's doing to himself. I, uh, I find very uh, interesting how people from uh, other countries visit another country, obviously. How tourists, uh, without speaking English or the local language, how can they get by? How is, how is that possible? I mean, surely with a lot of uh, tenacity, but very impressive. He takes a short pause to swallow his spit. Well, he's very talkative. Uh, you like Paris? <laughs> he ignores you and keeps mumbling. Maybe it's just best to not say anything. The tone of his voice makes you think he's making a list of all the things you, he hated. As the cookies, um, squid. Octopus, hate it, hate it. Knives and forks, hate him. Uh, he mumbles on and on. All right, very a lot of things he hates. He's made that sound before. I have no idea. No idea how to read this. Third time. You immediately recognize the word. Versailles? Is this Versailles here? These two characters? No, it can't be. They're the same. Why would we have two of the same characters? I'm not sure. Oh, but maybe this is Versailles. He bursts out laughing. Maybe, or maybe not. He glances at you. Oh, he asked me a question now. You don't understand. You get the impression he wants. He wants you to repeat what he's saying. Uh, let's just ignore. You stare at him, not understanding what he wants. He falls back into his seat, his eyes close. He doesn't want to speak to you anymore. You've had passengers who didn't speak any French before, but this one seems furious. Maybe he didn't like Paris? Maybe he prefers Tokyo? You smile. For just a second, you imagine yourself as a taxi driver in Tokyo. Businessmen, well-dressed high schoolers, those Japanese mobsters. What are they called again? Uh, Yakuza. Well, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna say Yakuza to him. For the fuck, that would be so weird. You keep driving. You think about the movie you saw during your hospital stay. A black American soldier on the run who starts hanging out with some sort of bum who was a huge jazz fan. It was a singular movie. Incredible. It made a real impression on you. The title was... No, you can't remember the title. And how could you possibly describe it to your passenger? Impossible. What a shame you can't speak his language. What a shame not to understand him, not to be able to talk to him about it. You sigh. Maybe later, you'll have time to learn Japanese. Probably hard. Not the same alphabet, not the same letters, 
But then again, your parents could read in Arabic and write in French. So you could too? Yes, later. You'll have time. And then here you here you are at the airport. A heap of ramps and tunnels bring you to the drop-off zone. You pull to a stop and your client wakes up. He notices the airport, a few taxis, you're on fatigue. He starts walking peacefully in a soft voice. He shakes his head. Uh, okay. He pays his fare with a twinge of shame. You get out of your taxi and help him with his suitcase out of the trunk. It weighs a ton. He thanks you with a sad look of defeat. He grabs onto your sleeve as you try to get back into your car. What? I can't understand you, dude. I'm sorry. You nod very slowly. Uh. uh no, thank you. <laughs> uh, P2, what? He looks. He looks you over slowly from head to toe. When he starts speaking again, his voice is monotone and completely void of emotion. Oh, I wish I understand what he's saying. Something inside you resonates, like you understood what you just said. 19? Uh... He lost someone. His wife? Maybe? He looks upset. He shakes his head. He should have come with someone. Oh man, stupid. I just, No, I can't understand. I'm sorry. If only you could understand him. He bows. When he straights up, straightens up, his eyes are misty. You don't know why, but it seems normal to reply, you're welcome. He walks away with his huge suitcase. Without looking back, your passenger goes into the airport. The sliding glass doors close behind him. You start to realize the airport is waking up all around you. A woman who must have been a viking in another life is pushing a floor waxer across the tiles in the entryway, just below the heating vents. A fellow driver waves as he's leaving the drop-off zone. A plane, maybe the first one of the day, appears in the sky. You get back in the taxi. For a minute, you rub your freezing hands together to war warm them. Just a few seconds before driving off. Alright, 21.56 euros with a 2 euro tip. Uh, Arigato gozaimasu! <laughs> That's the only thing I can say in Japanese. Uh, that means uh, thank you for those of you who don't. Uh, no. Alright, so let's pick up another passenger here. Ooh, this guy kind of looks like the Hunchback from Notre Dame, from the old uh, Disney movie, the animated one. Let's pick him up. <laughs> a, sign, a sign at the end of the street informs you something... can't read that. Too quick. Uh, okay. What just happened? Oh, uh, don't tell me it's broken again. Ugh, yeah, I think it is. I think I need to uh, restart the game. Alright, not to worry, let's, let's do this. All right, we're back in the game. Um, passengers, obviously, they have been uh, cycled. So let's pick up, uh, I don't know, this woman here. I've seen her before. Out of nowhere, you hear a voice whispering in your ear. This is where I died. You break hearts. There is no noise in the cab, no noise outside. A silhouette appears on the back of the seat of the cab. Its features appear one by one as if drawn with a paintbrush. His name is Ludwig. That's just so creepy. <laughs> Fucking hell. So much suffering. He's Quint, a little boy. Would you be so kind as to drive me? Uh, where? Very well. Let us drive then. The boy's silhouette flutters for a moment, then disappears entirely. You hold your breath. On the back seat behind you, the boy slowly reappears. You start driving. Rue de Rosier, please. You stare at the rearview mirror. Start driving? I'm already. Alright. 
The little ghost heaves a short sigh. He seems happy. Your stomach starts to growl. You're hungry. Strange. Usually you never fall victim to the night munchies. Your colleagues often gain weight when they work the night shift. Nothing to do but snack. But snack. Tonight, however, you are famished. We're going to rue the Posier to beat the best to eat the best falafel in Paris. I love walking around there, drinking in the smells, hearing the hiss of fried food, seeing juices and sauces dripping off the sandwiches. He's almost giddy. Oglers who twist every which way to catch a piece of tomato about to fall. His silhouette blurs. I wish I could taste it all. The, re the rear window lowers all by itself. A gust of icy cold wind fills the cab. Close the window as quickly as possible. Behind you the little ghost's voice starts to break up. Scatter. I can just imagine, but it's not the same. Just not like the real thing. No, not at all. Same. He seems far off, about to disappear. Everything alright? He does not answer your question and becomes becomes vague and hesitant. They're screaming, shouting, throwing themselves on the ground. A bomb goes off, another. Same. Catches his breath, looks outside, points at something in the distance. There, Rue de Rosier. Paris stopped here. A city wall on which so many children played and hide and seek no longer exists. I never even climbed up there. Now the stones are hidden in other buildings, and no, no one will ever find them again. Such is the life of a city. He grows silent for a moment, a nauseating smell takes over the cab. It takes you a few seconds to recognize it. Gunpowder. Rue de Rosier, Peter Street. How many people thought they were home before, be home there before leaving to grow old somewhere? There was a terrorist attack, right here, six dead, right in the middle of lunch. Plates were being passed, bottles being poured, forks falling on the floor. The child in the back blurs, becomes distant. I can imagine the last sentences they pronounced, their last words. No, no, don't worry about it. Yes, yes, I can give you something else instead. Two coffees. Coffees. When he starts to speak again, his voice has a broken quality. As if were as if there were a far off threatening figure walking towards the car. I like to drink coffee. I didn't even know it existed before when I was alive, breathing, walking. His figure flutters. What about you? Do you like coffee? You can tell this is not just a simple question. The sh <coughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. The child smiles at you. Tell me about coffee. Taste, its texture, its warmth. Tell me everything. Talk about coffee, I guess. I do love a good cup of coffee. Coffee is a drug, a hard one. It screws with your stomach. Reminds you you're just really just a machine inside. Tubes, pockets, filters. Burns your throat and stomach. Why do you think... Why do you drink it then? I don't know. I think that sums up who we are, doesn't it? I mean, I, I wouldn't say that about coffee. Uh, I I don't regularly, regularly drink coffee. Maybe like twice or three times a week. Just like a mug of coffee. Normally black. But uh, I quite like it. It's like you're drinking tea. Except without the herbal... Uh, properties. But you have something else. I think that sums up who we are, doesn't it? You glance back at the kid. He's listening in silence. So, you don't like it? Oh no, I do. But it's like cigarettes. Slow killer. No matter the quality of the beans or the tobacco. Poison. A memory floats through your head. A heavy set figure rolling a cigarette between his worn fingers. We are complicated beasts. Yes, we like to mistreat ourselves. Like what happened in the Rue de Rosier. Suddenly, he is gone. You break sharply, keeping an eye on the rearview mirror. You are now alone in the taxi. Alone and craving falafel. <laughs> Alright, that was very interesting. Although it didn't help me at all or gave me any money. Interesting nonetheless. Uh, who shall we pick up here? 
I'm gonna see if I... Uh, I'm not sure if I should be refusing some passengers. Ah, oh, man. My poetry needs a car ride. Uh, let's uh, refuse that. Sorry, I don't like poetry. Not that much. Okay, so if I refuse, I get different people. Okay. Check out this uh, young lady, I think, up here. Woman crossing the street notices you. Then, for no apparent reason, she changes her mind. Okay, no problem. Leia Graja. Alright. I need to go to St. Owen. Alright, let's go. Next passenger does not simply get in. She throws herself in. Energetic, lively, chatty. She looks like she never stops. She gives you her address and heaves a big sigh. Start driving. Do you mind putting on some music? Uh, choose... She seems like the cultural type. Let's choose a cultural station. An Ethiopian jazz tune turns up, starts up. Your young passenger runs jerkily over to you, then she stops and lets herself go with the music. You like listening to this station every once in a while. The playlist is random, unusual and surprising. Some of the stuff they play you can't understand. Or you can't stand. Some of it drives passenger nuts. But there's something magical about discovering new tunes. New styles. All of a sudden, your passenger taps you on the shoulder and pulls you from your thoughts. Hey, can I ask you something? She doesn't wait for an answer. Do you think that people have faces that go with their personalities? Uh, it's possible, I guess. She pauses. She scans your face like she's trying to determine your personality. I think it's possible. She starts speaking quicker and quicker. I saw a really weird movie tonight, a black and white one, crazy old. Directed by Hitchcock, this famous British guy. The female lead steals money on the job. She opens her eyes wide. But like 40,000 or something, which must be worth a whole lot at the time. So she goes to hide out in the motel. The owner is a, the owner is a bit precious. His name is Norman, so with that kind of name, you know something's wrong from the start, right? Or you can provide an answer, she's moved on. And then she gets slaughtered in the shower with, with this big knife. Insane. They kill off the main character after, what? Uh, half an hour? Oh, is this Psycho she's talking about? I think so. There's blood everywhere. Uh, of course, you can't see anything. Old movies, they never show anything. You never even see when people kiss. Yeah, so anyway, the dude who owns the, mo the motel, he so completely looks like a murderer. And she goes right there, gets a room, has dinner with him, they chat. No big shock when he slices her up. She pauses. Silence fills the cab. Like the rest of the story is missing, like your passenger is struggling to say something. And. Uh. Did you steal money? What? He reminds you. Reminds you of someone? Well, yeah. They broke up with my boyfriend last night. It wasn't serious or anything, but when I met him right away, I was like, shit, this guy just looks like a liar. Don't know why, it's just what I thought at the time. She pauses. When she starts speaking again, her voice is filled with anger. And I was right. He totally played me. He's got some other sh other chick in uh, Ville Juif. It sucks because this guy knows a ton about movies, right? He showed me some stuff. Real films. There was one, a masked killer, like in Scream, who murders teens at camp. Like, they totally, they're totally getting it on. And here comes a killer carrying an harpoon and BAM! The slot he slaughters both of them in one fell swoop. She giggles. Crazy thing is that the killer is actually some kids, like seven year olds or something. So good. Yeah, so this guy I was with, he said he knew people in the industry, that he could totally help me get an internship or something like that. Total lies too, probably. There's nothing you can do with liars, real pathological ones. They believe all their lies. Can't tell the truth from, lies, from the lies anymore, something is not right in his head. Your young passenger taps her thigh. Man, I said some I say some stupid shit, don't I? <laughs> like I'm trying to make excuses for the hassle. You're not far from her place now, she slowly calms herself down. The dude in the motel in the film? Obviously, he was the murderer. Dressed up as his, his mum. That that he turned into a mummy. She pauses. He was pretty fucked up. She stares at you in the rear mirror as you park. And you? Uh, who do I look like? 
Hard to say. Your beard hides most of your face. But you look like... Cool. Um, I mean, detached. Yeah, detached. Like the world, everything around us. Like it's not really your place, you know? Like you're just passing through. She flashes you a smile. Don't take it the wrong way. I'm just saying detached and cool in a good way. No worries. She looks down. Phew. I thought I didn't want to hurt your feelings. She hands you her fare. Thank you. A second later, she's outside. You watch her walk across the parking lots and up to the doors of her building. Once she's inside, you drive away. Alright, 16 cents in a tip. Not uh, great. <laughs> But 15 euros in total, I guess that's good. Oh man, I'm, I feel like I'm not doing anything productive in terms of the investigation. I need to pick up someone that actually knows something about the investigation. I need to get my clues up. François de la Nere. Let's go, friends. You immediately recognize the next passenger getting in your taxi. You never watch television, rarely listen to the radio, you don't read the newspaper, and yet... You know François de la Nere face. Polemicist? Polemicist? Novelist? Columnist? Politician too, you think. Your passenger distractly gives you his address. You start driving. He appears to be out of breath. His voice and hands are shaking. Unbelievable! He's separates each syllable as if it's going to protect him from the violence around him. Unbelievable. Is everything okay? Can you even begin to fathom what a public danger this represents? What? A, few five, a mere five minutes ago, I want, wanted to cross the street. Suddenly, slicing through the darkness in deafening silence, came an electric car. Its asphalt coated tires drove right over the tip of my old loafer. It's shot, I can tell. The leather is compressed and streaked with mud and soot. It's a travesty. A travesty! He begins writing furiously. You catch a few words from time to time. What for? For the environment? Create more road deaths? Save polar bears? He leaves you hanging for a second before grinning. Another badly thought out stunt from the snowf snowflake hipster lobby? Quinoa? Electric planes that will crash into Charles de Gaulle airport without sound? You hear a throaty laugh. The earth, safe, intact, clean, but at what cost? No way, Jose. Our planet produces oil, so we must use it. It would be unnatural not to. Unnatural indeed. He chuckles crudely. Rise up in the defense of the sweet purr of the convertible, just as they would the hoots of the howl in danger of extinction in the lush forests of the Champagne region? Ah, murder, assassin! The ferocious silence made to oppress us. He puts down his notebook, a wolfish grin spreads across his face. Yes, magnificent editorial, just magnificent. What about you? Do you want to have a silent car? Uh... I do, I do stand by electric cars, obviously fucking using petrol fuel or uh, oil resources are not good for the planet and you should, shouldn't be using them. I mean, yes, it's natural, but uh, it's causing a lot of harm and we must cease its uh, use. But at the same time, the silent cars are a real threat and I've, I think I've read something a few years back because of the Prius. Uh, they would be so silent, people wouldn't be uh, acknowledged by their presence when they were crossing the streets and whatnot. So they were putting like artificial sound making, like some speakers or something, in the car so it made uh, more sounds. So it makes more noise as it's uh, driving by. Uh, would you like to have a silent car? Silent car? No, I wouldn't. See now? See? I'm not the least bit surprised. As if taxi drivers don't like them, then something is definitely wrong with this world. Seriously though, I'm being straight with you. No bells and whistles. It's God's honest truth. A city without noise is not a city, mark my words. You drive in silence for a few minutes. In the back seat, the polemicist uh, is fuming and you catch occasional snippets of nonsense. 
The taxi has almost reached your passenger's place. Just here. You pull up in front of his address, an old building freshly renovated. On the top floor, the bay windows shine faintly in the darkness as the Eiffel Tower's spotlight washes over them. Your passenger sighs. Oh, the devils. The fools. It's the middle of the night and they're still having the time of their lives. He opens the window on his side and screams at a packed cafe. The heated patio is filled with young people, well dressed and quite drunk. When will you cease this madness? Then turns to you to whisper as if in secret. Every night they make one hell of a racket, impossible to get a wink of sleep. He pays, gets out of the car as in, and is in front of the bar in three angry leaps. You can hear his voice from far away, a few words and some outdated swearing with a whiff of senility. Stop listening and drive off. Alright, made uh, 15.92 from that. Cool. Uh, Alright. Oh, what's this guy? Let me, let me let try and pick up this guy again. I think something happened the last time I tried to pick up his passenger. Hugo Delaney. Gambetta. Ooh, 32 euros. Let's do this. Ah, oh, shit, man. Your next passenger is holding a bow. Which is which he inadvertently pokes in his eye while getting in the cab, in the taxi. He leaps into the backseat and looks at you with a lost expression on his face. I'm supposed to be at the Gambetta bus station in less than 15 minutes. Your seatbelt. You run the first red light you come across. With a little luck, you'll get this kid to his bus. You see him mopping behind you. Shit. Is it really that hard to be on time, bro? You shit stain can't miss the bus. You just can't, man. What, what is he? What is he wearing? He has like a, a gorilla outfit, a uh, shirt, and then uh, like a cap with big ears. Like big ears and then even bigger ears. Uh, like bunny ears. Very weird. Everything okay? Yeah, okay. This might sound a little crazy, but uh, what do you think of my Gravia outfit? Gravia? Yeah, it's a race in the game. The bow, the helmet, the armor, you know, all that shit. Um, it's very nice, I guess. Nice? Yeah, okay. What do you think? It's lit? <laughs> lit, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. Interesting? I don't want interesting. He sighs heavily and dro droops his head. Shit, all this for a chick. I'm so into her. I even start playing her favorite game, Lost Legend V, to make her like me, but but I look like a moron. He looks at the time on meter. Uh chill out man, just chill. That's alright. You have you ever done anything like this for a chick? Oh yeah, I definitely did some stupid stuff. Much stupider than dressing up. It's not dressing up, it's a cosplay. He turns his bow over. This cosplay is for a convention? Yeah, in Belgium. There'll be thousands of cosplayers. It's pretty legit. Will there be a lots of graviers? Gravius. No, I don't think so. They're popular, but the costume is daring. You gotta flash your abs at everyone all weekend. Oh, so that's actually his uh, chest. I thought it was like a print on his shirt. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine. You really think so? Well, it's daring. Plus, if you're the only one dressed like that, it takes a minute to think. You are so totally, totally right. How could she not be into me? You park in front of the bus station. The passenger hands you a bill to pay his fare. Keep the change. I've always wanted to say that. Good luck with the Gravier thing. Gravier, yeah. Thanks, man. Second later, is running for his bus. His bow slung, the, slung across his back. Alright, just made a cool profit there. Alright, I think... Uh, I'm not sure if we have time for one more passenger. But my time is pretty much about to run out. Uh, let's pick up this uh, young woman here. Or let's try at least. As you drive by a kebab restaurant, you're, you're overcome by the wafting smell of it. Okay. I need help with the delivery. Alright, let's accept it. The passenger who sinks into the back seat is one of the hordes of cyclists you almost always hit at red lights. 
He's a bike courier, the kind who pays no attention to red lights, stopped signs, or right of ways. She gives you a smile. Holy shit, flipping freezing out. You smile. Do we know each other from somewhere? I don't think so. Um, I probably just cut you off on my bike or something. Or maybe it was me, maybe I changed lanes without signaling. We both burst out laughing, she gives you an address. For a delivery, but it's too cold, I can't seem to get warm. Start the cab and turn the heat to high. Warm hair fills the car, the young woman nods. Thanks, that's exactly what I'm here for. She closes her eyes, as if to enjoy the muffled hum of the heater. I hope you don't mind, there was no way I was going to get back on my bike. I left it behind with my colleagues in front of that restaurant. Besides, I know it's pretty counterproductive paying for a cab ride to deliver food, but I just... All the warm hair, it feels good. How's the work going? The young woman is struggling to stay awake. Pretty good, though I had a run-in with one of my colleagues tonight. He's... He falters. He's a real know-it-all, the kind of guy who thinks he's been there, done that. The work itself is pretty good though, in the winter we do a lot of business, people stay whole, hold up at home like rabbits. I have to say, I understand them. She yawns. I'm warming up, but I'm sure and but I sure am tired all of a sudden. She closes her eyes. Sorry, we're already here. You pull up to the address. Right, back to work. The delivery girl quickly exits the cab, slamming the door behind her. She rings the door of an elegant Parisian building. A moment later, the door cracks open. The courier hands her clang a plastic bag with takeout containers inside. She smiles. The door shuts. She rushes over to the cab and flings herself into the backseat. Come on, let's get out of here, fast. Start the cab. Back to the restaurant, please. I left my bag there. Well, that's that. Her phone chirps. Business is picking up. He sighs. But yeah, I think I'm going to wait a little. Check it later. She settles comfortably into the back seat and closes her, closes her eyes. Uh. Is your customer nice? Have you been doing this for a long time? I'm gonna ask that. I'm not sure what's this evil's face here. The question doesn't seem all that evil, but I'm gonna ask uh, have you been doing this for a long time? It's been, um, this is my second winter, so yeah, a year and a half or so. Time really flies. I have to say it. Gets, I have to say, it gets pretty boring after a while. She flashes you a toothy grin. At first you're like, yeah, what's the best shortcut? How can I get to that restaurant as fast as possible? But after a while, you know, all is the same old routine. There is a pause. She gives you a short laugh. Nah, I shouldn't complain, really. At least I can take it easy on my bike. There's no one to really mess around with me. She lets out a silvery laugh, very soothing in tone, the laugh of someone you can trust. Do you really like what you do? Yeah, I do, absolutely. Sure, we don't earn much and the job is really exhausting, but... First of all, I have a killer ass. <laughs> my dates can't believe it, guys are really crazy about it. All my girlfriends want to know my secret. Basically, it's a win-win situation. But second, and this is what I really love, I'm my own boss. A faint smile spreads over her face. Well, I do have a boss actually, my telephone, it's an algorithm. Some guys, some guy calls me every now and then, asks me questions, asks me to take on more shifts, but he doesn't grab my ass, and he doesn't waylay, waylay me in the corridor, he doesn't ask me to be a good little girl and go pick up his sandwich. And that makes it all worthwhile. She looks serious, as if she had just concluded a long speech. So that's my friend, is why I wouldn't trade it in my bike for all the world. Any prospects for the future? Nah, you're right. Not much as far as prospects go. Not like I'm going to be made team manager or anything, that's for sure. But it's not all that bad. There, were, there are worse jobs around. Silence. And I know what you're going to say, I'm being exploited, badly paid, and all that. But the worst part is actually the customers. You look at her in surprise. No, I swear it's true. You deliver their dinner because they're worn out after working all day, and they don't even tip you a single euro. 
still they are understanding and all that. They gave me articles about all the big bad delivery businesses abusing us. And then they order sushi from the restaurant on the street. <laughs> yeah, it's very hypocritical. Never trust the stomach. He makes a little farting sound with her mouth. Believe me, a bunch of cheap skates. He stops, he stops you with a gesture before you can speak. But all that is just for the time being, promise. I'm putting a little aside, like my father always said, I'm going to open a takoyaki food truck. Have you ever had takoyaki? You pull up to the restaurant, a swarm of bike couriers are waiting for their orders. Uh, no, I don't think I did. It's a speciality from Osaka, octopus fritters. But not just any fritters, my grandmother's recipe. Basically, pretty simple idea. Sell them to people lined up for concerts, movies, plays, smiles. Anyhow, I'm out of here. There are lots of starving people in Paris, and we don't want to let them down. She hands you the fare and exits the cab. Thanks again, really. You're good company. If you ever need a shortcut, just ask. She gives you a last smile, then walks over to her crew. Alright, she didn't give me much of a tip either. I guess that's fair, because she doesn't get much, so... Cool, I think that's the end of uh, my uh, night. Ooh, there's a... Oh man, there's a, there was a knight or something there. Uh, Alright, game definitely broke there a little bit. NPC name. <laughs> We've met Francine, so let's see the damage. Made 125 in profits. And 155 in losses. Balances out. Damn. Man, so many maintenance issues, dudes. Like, how am I supposed to make so much mon more money? I met Ludwig, let's continue. You wipe your face. You're starting to, starting to feel sleepy. You're suddenly overcome with the desire to sleep. You close your eyes, press your fingers to your eyelids, and let out a yawn. Crack your knuckles and get to work. Man, I have, I have discovered no clues whatsoever tonight. Like, nothing. Pretty bad, pretty bad if I say so myself. Uh, I feel a bit nervous because, uh, like, look at this. There's no a single like lead that guarantees a suspect. You know, I have this one, the weapon police gun in the 70s. Uh, weapon rare use used in the 70s. Uh, weapon weapon kept in perfect shape by a professional. And that's it. That's pretty much what I have. And all the messages... Fierce... Uh, no, wait. What are the messages to the victims? Uh, message on crime scene time is up. Message on crime scene 2 is deserve this. I don't know. It seems like someone in the... And uh, in the, the justice department... I'm saying this because uh, the killer's name is the judge and obviously has a tie to some some link to law enforcement. So I'm uh, my best clue or my s main suspects right now are these two guys. Pierre uh, Bataz and Paul Marie Ragonard. A retired cop and an active cop. So, yeah, man, I, uh, this is going to be very difficult, I think. Very difficult indeed. But uh, we're going to carry on. I'm going to thank you guys right here, and we're going to take a break. When we come back, we continue on to night six. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.